sorry, I thought I had time to take a drink before we went live, and apparently I didn't, and I really needed it, so my apologies for my rudeness. How are you? How are you doing, guys? It's Thursday. This week is kind of flying by, I feel like. I, I still have so many things to do, and there's only two days left. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. It's like, gosh, I should have already gotten so much done, but I'm a little bit behind. Hi, Joan. Oh, hey, Katie. Good to see everybody. Slowly. <laughs> nice, Miss Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Your sound is awful again. <sighs> okay. Well, I got to think about this for a second because... Okay, everybody hold on. Okay, how is this sound now? I'll tell you what's happening. You're probably going to have to turn your volume up. I know, Katie. I know. I'm going to tell you guys. I'm going to explain this whole sound situation. <laughs> Ugh, so frustrating. So frustrating. So let me know. Okay, so it sounds better. You definitely are going to have to turn up your volume, though, because I don't have a microphone on. Um, so the deal is, is that my iPad, I forgot to plug it in last night and <laughs> not that you really need to know all this, but I forgot to plug it in. And so I have this splitter cable so that I can like plug in and charge and use the microphone at the same time. But for whatever reason, this guy stinks. <laughs> He's terrible. I'm sending him back because this is what's screwing up all of the audio. So... Because the iPad needs to charge, I have it plugged in. No microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just turn it up and get real close. <laughs> Put your headphones in. <laughs> All right. Some people are saying the sound is fine. That's good. That's good. I feel like when I don't have the microphone on, you guys, you, you, I sound very far away. Um, so I apologize for that. When we do get down to do the project, things will be much, much better um, if the sound is a little low. But yeah. It is very frustrating, Katie. I, I know. Thank you so much for feeling my pain. It is just a constant frustration, you know, but it's definitely this splitter guy. He's got, he's got to go, got to go. And I also need to make a note for myself that says, uh, hey, silly, please plug in <laughs> at the end of the day so your electronics can charge. That's sort of important, right? All right, so... As I was saying before, um, when I was busting your eardrums with the worst audio ever. <laughs> um, so, it's Thursday. <laughs> it's Thursday and I still have so many things to do, but I get to take a break and be fun have fun with you guys and do a fun project. And I have something else really kind of fun to talk about. I do notice though that, let's see, let's scroll back here. Nicole says she has a funny story for all of you. Nicole, what is this story you speak of, my friend? I could use a good laugh. You guys, I just ate lunch and like, I'm starving. What, what is that? Like I put food into my body and my stomach is now literally growling. Like I just, I just fed you. <laughs> What do you want from me? I just fed you. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> so not a lot of people today. Must be something else going on. Or everybody has just decided that they are so over me for the week. <laughs> do not have a lot of people here. Uh, Joan, if you can give us a share, maybe that'll help boost us up a little bit. But we definitely don't have a lot of people here. Um, and that seems a little odd to me. Hi, hi Anne from Maine. I wanna to go to Maine so bad. It's on my bucket list. You do. So Robin says we need a um, a snack shenanigans. Oh my gosh, hold on. Hold the snack shenanigans thought. So Nicole says she went to get her blood work and a lady had a tattoo on her back, on the back of her leg that said live wire. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It would be amazing if 
she was actually one of the live wires. That would be so cool, but it's still cool nonetheless. <laughs> Nicole, did you take a picture of it? <laughs> oh my goodness. Maggie, my heart. <laughs> My heart is breaking. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I got fun things to talk about. Snack shenanigans. Let's let's start with that since the question um since the question came up. Um I've got some snacks, but I don't have a whole lot. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of snacks. I do, however, have some really disgusting snacks. And so um let's let's plan for how about next Friday? Next, like, we'll do our regular live, but like, how about Friday afternoon? Is that okay? Can we do a snack shenanigans next Friday afternoon? I think, I think we need one. I think we need one. <laughs> you guys, I saw the mayonnaise flavored ice cream posted in the group. Ooh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Let's plan on that. Let's plan on doing a snack shenanigans next Friday. I do have another one planned coming up in March with uh, some special guests. But in the meantime, I don't want to leave you guys hanging because everybody keeps asking. So, yeah, we'll plan a snack shenanigans for next week. And, um, yeah, that'll give me a chance to get on Amazon and maybe pick up one or two extra little things. Just so that, you know, I've, I have a variety. I do have some really gross things, though, that are already here. So, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, sort of. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so let's see. What else? So, yeah. Ooh, a mayonnaise milkshake. Like, that just makes my stomach hurt just thinking about it. Blech. Gross. Tina, I agree. Why waste ice cream with mayonnaise? Ooh. No, 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 no. Um, okay, so... Uh, last night, I was having a little chatsy with my, um, my dear friends, Joan and Ginger. You guys know Joan and Ginger. Well, if you've been around here a while, you know Joan and Ginger. <laughs> if you don't know Joan and Ginger, first of all, Joan is our <laughs> unofficial, unofficial brand ambassador for Sarah Ellis Designs. She is my right hand. Uh, I, I always say she and Jane are my right and my left. Um, Joan always posts the links. Joan um, is very active in the group and makes me look really bad because I'm not nearly as active as she is. She is a force to be reckoned with and I love her, love her dearly. She's like family to me. Um, and you know, and she has been so supportive of me. It just, you, I, I could get all sappy. I won't, but she and Ginger, they are both really close friends and I'm friends with both of them. And we have the funniest little conversations. And last night they came up with this idea that I think you guys are going to love. I think this is just really, really cool. It is terrifying for me, but it's a really cool idea. So they were thinking, and we I don't know if they settled on a name for it or not. Um, I They were saying Stump Sarah or Stump the Design. I don't know. I don't know. But the, the gist of this is <clears throat> they are going to send me a package that has beads and some things in the inside of it. And I'm not allowed to open it until the Facebook Live. And when I open it, then I'm going to design on the fly with whatever's in the package. So <clears throat> essentially, you're going to get to see me and like my creative process, which is scary. <laughs> It's scary in here. But what I mean is like, it's scary because for me, I have no idea what is going to be in the package. I have no clue. And it could be things that are things that I have never worked with before or things that I don't even know what to do with. And you guys are going to cheer me on and we're going to put together a design on the fly with these items that I literally do not open until the time. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. We're not going to do that every live, but I feel like every once in a while, that's going to be a really fun thing to kind of mix up what we're already doing. So Ginger mailed a package to me today. She said it should be here next week. So it'll probably be here like Monday or Tuesday. I'm thinking maybe we will use it on Thursday. So we'll kind of plan for that on Thursday. So um, yeah, 
I did not design shenanigans. I love it. <laughs> I think really it's going to be challenging though, because they, they want to send me things that um, they don't know what to do with. They, you know, they're hoping maybe I know something to do. Like it's going to be fun. So I think it's a really cool idea. We're going to see how it goes. If it goes really well and it doesn't turn into a complete disaster because I mean, it's possible. Um, then maybe we'll open it up to everybody. And cause I do have a PO box, you know, and we could set it up so that, you know, every once in a while, if, if you wanted to send me like a box of something to stump the designer, um, that I could do that. So uh, we'll see how we'll see how it goes. We'll do it a time or two and see. Um, and it'll be fun regardless. Like even if I don't make anything, we'll have a good time trying, right? That's it's always fun. So okay, that's what we're gonna do at some point next week. I'm hopefully gonna do that on Thursday. Hopefully there will be snack shenanigans on Friday. So cross your fingers. Guys, I haven't been creating events for the Facebook Lives just because this, this week has been really crazy busy. So I apologize for there not being in a, an event to send you notifications when this live happened. Um, and I think that probably has something to do with why the numbers are so low today. Um, so my apologies, I'm gonna do better. <laughs> I'll do better. I'll do better. I promise. Um, let's see. Okay. So for today's project, what we're going to do is since it's Thursday, we kind of do like a, we try to do on Thursdays, throwback Thursday projects. And that just means that I take a project from the past, whether it's been here or anywhere else that I have designed over the past, you know, 10 years or so. And I bring that project back to life and redo it with you guys. So today's project is going to be a wire wrapped bracelet. And it's actually a really easy project. But I feel like we have so many new people that this is a great opportunity to show you a project that maybe um, you know, maybe is something that you've never tried before, or it is something that you've done before and you just have forgotten about it. It makes a really great bangle type bracelet. It can be done in a million different colors. And so I feel like this is a good one. Like if you're selling your jewelry, this is a great one to use like your favorite gemstone beads and like you can stack them up to display them or take pictures of them for your website. So I'm going to be using these guys. I don't even know what kind of beads these are. I know there's something obviously <laughs> but they're blue and they're pretty and I love this color so this is what we're going to be using and we're going to be using some 20 gauge wire I'm using some 20 gauge German style wire but you absolutely can do this with artistic wire in fact I think that the very first time I ever did this project I think I did it with artistic wire if I'm not mistaken uh, I will not say where this project happened um but it was you know in another lifetime <laughs> previous to the past lifetime like it's been a minute okay let's do it let's do it yes turquoise beads with black spots that sounds good to me Nicole <laughs> perfect description my friend perfect description okay so yeah it does remind me of denim too I agree they're just really kind of cool I don't know what I, I'm sure that there's some kind of something special <laughs> I just don't know what and I believe these are eight millimeter beads. Let me grab my little, my little gauge here and we'll be sure. So the truth is, is that it doesn't make any difference what size beads. Yes, these are, these are eight millimeter beads. It doesn't matter what um, size beads you use. You literally can do this project with any, any size bead that you want to. Um, if you are a beginner at any kind of wire wrapping, I do kind of recommend starting with a bigger bead, like an eight millimeter, just to kind of get your, um, get a good feel for it. Okay, so I'm going to take these off of the strand and make us a little pile here. So this is a super easy to do project. You're only going to need a couple of things. And that's part of why I really like this, uh, because you don't need a lot of materials to do this. It does take a little bit of wire, but as far as everything else is concerned, you're just going to need like two jump rings and a clasp. And that's all. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna undo our wire here for starters. So I normally use 22 gauge for everything, but I'm gonna use 20 today. Feeling a little feisty. Let me get my nylon jaw pliers here and I'm gonna straighten out the kinks on that a little bit. Okay, so we need a lot. <laughs> Okay, Deb, 
I really, I, you know what? I don't appreciate that at all. Miss Joan, can you please, Deb, you can always watch these projects in um, afterwards on the YouTube channel and you can fast forward through all of the chit chat. You certainly don't have to be a part of that. You know, we've got a really great community here and we enjoy each other's company. If that's not your cup of tea, that's totally okay. You know, um, just, just watch it on YouTube later and fast forward. But remember that there's a real person sitting here, you know? So that's that's certainly not not appreciated at all. All right, so I'm gonna give myself, you're gonna need quite a bit of this, okay? Depending on whether or not you are going to need to, um, you're gonna want to go over this once or twice, okay? And I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. So I'm gonna give myself, gosh, probably three feet of wire. I know that sounds like a lot. But I want to be sure, yes, Anita, well said, my friend. I'm sorry that she feels that way, too, because she's missing out on a wonderful community that we have. Okay, so I'm going to cut myself about three feet of wire. And that's not an actual measurement um, by any means, because we're kind of designing on the fly, on the fly here. Um, I want to find the middle. So I'm going to bring my two ends together. Okay. And when I find the middle, this is where we want to start our wrapped loop. I know that seems like a lot to like wire wrap with, but it totally, totally is doable. Okay. So don't let it, don't let this throw you off. So what we want to do is we want to bend that wire. I know you've got a lot of wire to work with here. Um, you're going to come in with your round nose pliers, okay? And you are going to go up and over just like we normally do, but you've got like a ton, okay? You've got a ton of wire here. And we're going to roll those pliers out of the way and we're going to, we're going to, do our best to make a loop, okay? I realize this is a little bit tricky. That's why I say if this is um, if this is your first time, just give yourself grace. Be patient, okay? All right, so we've got a loop here. And we are going to do our very, very best to straighten out. And then we're going to take the other wire. And I'm making kind of a large loop, okay? I'm going to take this really long piece of wire. And I'm gonna wrap around about two or three times, just like we would with a normal wrapped loop, okay? Oh, that is one ugly, ugly, ugly loop, but that's okay. <laughs> no judgment zone, right? No judgment zone. All right, so there we go. We've got ourselves a wrapped loop in the center of this like long, long three foot piece of wire, okay? So we're going to take one of these, the one side that we use to wire wrap, and we're going to take that out um, to the side. And then our straight section, we're going to go ahead and thread on every single one of our beads. Okay. And this little section, you could probably get away with trimming this off. You may not need all of this, but it kind of depends on if you need to pick up at the end and go wire wrap with this section. So... Let's just kind of see what happens, okay? So we're gonna thread on all of our beads and I don't mean all of the beads here. What I mean is I wanna kind of determine how long my bracelet needs to be and then I need to give myself in between each bead a little bit of extra room, okay? And I really just have to kind of eyeball it. So I want to lay my beads out, okay? and kind of space them because we are gonna do some wire wrapping in between these guys. And that takes up a little bit of space. So you wanna be sure that you don't fill this up with beads if you want like a seven inch beaded section and then you're leaving yourself an extra inch for your clasp. You, you don't wanna fill up seven inches worth of beads, okay? Because you've got to have a little bit of extra room in here. So you kind of have to just lay it out and, and then just kind of measure as you go. So I've got all of my beads here. I'm gonna add a few more and then I'm gonna bring in the ruler to determine whether or not I've got enough, or if I have too many, 
this is kind of design on the fly <laughs> because I, I did not, I did not do this in advance. I should have given you guys a measurement, so I apologize for that. But we are starting with about three feet of the 20 gauge wire. And I realize that's a lot of stinking wire. But, okay, so let me grab my ruler. And it looks like... All right, so we've got almost five inches of beads, but if I come in here and I start to space them out just a little bit and you just wanna eyeball it, figure you've got, you know, a, not quite a fourth of an inch between all of them, okay? Whoops. And then bring your ruler in and look at it again. Now your little spacing out here does not have to be exact by any means, okay? You just wanna kinda of give yourself a good, okay, so I've got, when I space them out a little bit, I've got about six and a half inches worth. And that's exactly what I want um, because I'm gonna give myself about an inch extra for um, a clasp as well, okay? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I've got 15 eight millimeter beads, okay? And <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm so distracted, you guys, I apologize. Okay, so at the end of my wire down here, I'm going, this is the wire that has all my beads. I'm going to actually come to the end of this wire and I'm gonna just use my round nose pliers and turn a little bit of a loop here. Um, not because I need it for anything, but just to use it as a stopper to make sure that my beads don't fall off because I do need to kind of move these down, okay? I need to give myself a little bit of room here. All right, so we're gonna work one bead at a time. So we're gonna slide one bead up and I'm gonna take the wire and I'm gonna guide it. You guys remember the herringbone wire wrap? This is a really good starter project, okay? So if you're not, you know, you're not brave enough to try the herringbone, try this first. I'm gonna guide the wire along the edge of the bead so that it's gonna lay down right up against that bead as close as possible. Like if there's a little bit of daylight in between there, that's okay, okay? And I'm going to wire wrap with this really long piece of wire about three times, okay? And then we're gonna slide another bead up. Yes, these are eight millimeter beads. Um, but you can do this, you guys, you don't have to use eight millimeter beads for this. You can do this with any size bead you want. It really, if you're just starting out, it works better with the eight millimeter bead. All right, so next, slide another bead up and we're just gonna repeat this. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. <laughs> deep breath, deep breath, okay. I'm gonna guide the wire along the side of the bead and I want this wire to lay right up against the bead. Now you're gonna notice something. So this is where this is gonna differ from your herringbone wire wrap. You've got your wire coming to the front, notice, okay? So our wire actually started out on the front of these wraps, came around and we wrapped towards the front. This next one is actually, because we're following the path of the wire, is coming from the back and that's okay. That's why this is a little bit different than the herringbone wire wrap because remember with the herringbone, we always want our wraps to go to the front. With this, it's okay it, that it's gonna alternate. In the end, it's still gonna look beautiful. So don't, don't get caught up in, oh my gosh, it needs to be to the front just because I brought up the herringbone, okay? So again, I'm going to wrap around the wire about three times. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one all the way to the front, okay? So I, I actually made like more like four wraps gonna bring my next bead, okay, slide that bead up, and uh-oh, no, I'm not, <laughs> just kidding, that's on our way back. 
I don't want to do the full four to go to the front. I still want it to, to be on this side here, but it is going to wrap to the front of this bead. I'm so sorry, you guys. Thank you for being patient with me today. Feel like I got a little thrown off, but you know what? Happens to everybody. All right, so there's three, right? We're going to keep going. I know, yeah. So Sharon says, can you do this pattern where the wire lays on opposite sides? It would be a cool effect. Yeah, you absolutely can. And that's what I had started to do. But the thing is, is that when we get all the way down to the other end, we're going to come back the other direction. So, and you don't have to do it that way. Like you, you can only go down one side if you want to. And then you can you know, you can come back the other direction and it will take it to the other side. Or you can do, like you said, you can alternate and it'll, your wraps will alternate on the sides of the beads, right? And then you just want to go down once, I guess. That would look really cool. All right, so there's our next bead, okay? I'm going to slide another one. I'm going to guide the wire around the edge and I want to try to stay as close as I can. Okay. And wrap around about three times, okay? And then slide down. So we're just repeating this process, right? This is super duper easy to do unless you're a beginner. And if you're a beginner, give yourself grace, just like you guys are saying to me right now. Give yourself some grace with this. This is a great one to practice those wire wraps. It's also a great project to, to practice using large amounts of wire, which can be fickle, right? I mean, it, it takes some practice to get used to using really long lengths of wire. I did see a question, um, how would it do if you use the 22 gauge wire? The 22 gauge wire is going to be just as sturdy because you're giving these little wire wrap sections in between each bead. That's going to help to kind of bulk up. Plus you do have, you know, you've got the strength of your bead. It would be a little bit different if we were doing like maybe six or seven wire wraps in between and we had these large gaps of wire. Then I probably would say you need to go with a thicker gauge wire because that's where your structure for this design is really going to come from. Um, so as long as you're going to stick with maybe three wraps in between, I think you're going to be good with the 22 gauge wire. I don't think I would go um I would go down any any smaller. I feel like a 24 gauge just would be a little bit too small unless you were going to reinforce that wire with maybe some seed beads, which is also a really great option. All right. So wrapping around 3 times. Now something else that I want to do as I'm going I want to bring that ruler back in because remember we just kind of eyeballed it we were just kind of guessing with our our beads and I can tell that I'm probably going to have more beads than I needed so don't don't put the ruler away necessarily okay all right I'm gonna wrap ringing the bell with the wire Okay. Slide another bead up. <laughs> I still recognize you, Sharon. <laughs> it's funny how that happens. Okay, wrap around three times. And we're getting a little short on our wire here. So we're probably definitely gonna be using our long length here to go back the other direction. So when I said this takes a lot of wire, it absolutely, absolutely does. Yeah, it's not really a belt. It's where the wire is hitting my overhead light <laughs> because I have such a long piece of wire. All right, so another bead up. We're gonna guide that wire along the edge and wrap around. Okay. And another bead. And then I'm going to check the length again because I feel like we're getting pretty close here. Okay. We're getting there. So maybe I will use all of the beads. So I may have eyeballed it pretty close. Oh, thank you. That Tree of Life pendant has been really, really popular. 
guys, if you want to check out my Michaels classes um, in replay, you can definitely grab those over on the Michaels YouTube channel. So when the projects are over, um, you definitely can watch them in replay. It takes about 24 hours um, for them to get uploaded, particularly if it's a Saturday class, it, they wait until Monday to, up, to upload them. Let me roll back because I see there was a question here. Hold on. Let's see. Um... Holly wants to know what wire gauge do you recommend if I don't have German style wire? So that's a really good question. Um, so the German style and the artistic wire and any of your other craft wires, of course, are gonna differ. But for this project in particular, you can use exactly the same gauge that I'm using in a different wire. So I'm using 20 gauge German style wire. You're gonna be just as safe using the 20 gauge in the artistic wire or a different craft wire. Um, it, you're gonna get basically the exact same results. Um, it, it's just going to be a little bit softer, but I don't think you really need to adjust the gauge very much. If you find that the 20 millimeter, I'm sorry, the 20 gauge wire is a little bit um, too, you know, too thick for you to handle, or you're really kind of struggling with it, go down to the 22 and see if it makes a difference. But I feel like with the artistic wires in particular, because it's a dead soft wire, you shouldn't have any problem sticking with the 20. Nicole, what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna slide down another bead. I feel like I'm missing a whole conversation here. And wrap around. Okay, we're getting really, really close to the end. Okay. I hope it didn't get hacked either. I, um,. I actually have seen a couple of people this week in particular had their their um, accounts hacked, which is weird. Like you always hear about it when it happens to somebody that you know, it's like, oh, that's really a real thing. Okay, so I feel like I was one bead a little long, but because this bracelet's gonna go into the shop, I probably will go ahead and add it just so that it's a little bit bigger of a bracelet. Um, Let's see, there's another question. Fran says, is it best to use a glass or stone bead instead of acrylic? So it really is just gonna depend on you and your preference. It's really not gonna make much of a difference as far as the structure of the design is concerned. Um, the only real difference you're gonna see, I'll go ahead and wire wrap this one while we're chatting, is you're gonna feel a difference in the weight. Um, as far as the structure is concerned, you're really, the wire is what's gonna give you that nice strength that you're gonna find in this bracelet. Um, but like these guys, these are like some sort of stone, gemstone bead. They do have a little bit extra weight to them. Whereas our acry acrylic beads definitely are lightweight. So you're just gonna have a lighter weight um, bracelet. Overall, I don't think there's one, you know, I don't, I don't have a preference one way or another as far as that's concerned. All right, so I've wrapped around three times here at my last bead, and you can see we used every bit of that three foot, and we actually used a foot and a half because we, we folded that in half, right? But we used a lot of wire. So this is all that I have left. I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off, okay? Now, we still have all of this wire left over, right? And I wanna go back the other direction, but you don't have to. Okay, you totally can leave this just like it is and go ahead and form it into a bracelet and it still looks really, really awesome. But I kind of like it going back up the other side. So I'm going to go ahead with my wire and we're going to cross our fingers that I have enough. I should. <laughs> fingers crossed. I'm going to undo the loop here at the end and try to straighten that out as much as I can. I don't think we're gonna need this little tiny section. We'll probably have cut this off well before we need it, but you never know. So I'm gonna straighten that back out, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and do a loop here. Now, I already have wire wraps. Remember on this end, we did a wrapped loop. We did kind of a large wrapped loop. I'm gonna do another wrapped loop here, but I've already got wraps. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm just gonna wrap over the wraps that I already have. I'm not really gonna leave any extra space. So I'm not gonna bend the wire over my pliers, which is kind of different than what we normally do, right? I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers, okay? And again, we're making a big loop here because I don't know if I wanna use jump rings or not yet, I haven't decided. 
I'm gonna go ahead and treat this just like I would if we were making a wraps loop, but because I didn't leave any extra space, that's gonna meet right up with those wraps that are already there, right? Because we didn't bend over the barrel of the pliers. That's gonna give me the opportunity to just wrap right over what's already in place. Okay. And if that seems like a big chunky wire wrap, remember we have to we have to wrap this off on this end. So this one will be a chunky one too. We just haven't gotten there yet. Okay, so now I'm gonna follow the same path. I'm just gonna go back the other direction, right? So I'm gonna guide the wire along the side of the bead and then wrap around the wraps that are already there. But this time I only have enough room to do about two wraps. So don't think you're gonna get a full three wraps in there. You're just not going to because we are running out of room. The more wire we have, the less room there is. So wrap around the bead, right? You just wanna guide that wire around the edge of the bead, wrap around twice, okay? Guide around the edge of the bead, and we're just gonna go all the way back down our bracelet. And this is really gonna frame those beads up beautifully. Now you can see why this is a really cool project that you can add to your shop and other than the wire, this doesn't take a lot of materials, but the results are so pretty. This is gonna be a really cool bangle bracelet that you can stack up with your other favorite bracelets. You can wear it by itself if you use your favorite gemstones. Um, it really just, the results I feel like are well worth the amount of wire that it takes to create it. We're gonna run out of wire and I'm gonna show you that's all right. Okay, so I'm gonna do one last wire wrap here. I'm only gonna wrap around one and a half, okay? I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of room here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off, okay? And I'm gonna start my new piece of wire right there where I cut. So we've used every bit of three feet, you guys. <laughs> every bit and we ran out so we're gonna add a little bit of wire but that's okay because you need to see how to add the wire to it because that's probably gonna happen if you don't give yourself a ton of wire okay so when you're adding wire to a project I like to try to come in and where I've cut my wire off I really want this wire the new wire to kind of fall in line with that. So you don't wanna start wrapping in the opposite direction. You wanna just keep going in the same path that you were going. So what I like to do is I'll take my new piece of wire and I'm laying it over the top of the wraps that are already there, okay? And we'll deal with this end here in a little bit. But for now, I'm just gonna hold on to it. And then I'm going to wrap as if we were already attached. Okay, so now I'm gonna be able to come in and clean this up, but my wire is completely attached. We're gonna make this look as seamless as possible when we can, um, you know, when we can get back to that. Okay, so we're gonna keep going, right? Just keep going. Don't even let it bother you that that's, this is a brand new piece of wire because in the end, it is all connected and it's not gonna go anywhere. You don't have to worry about it. Whereas like with bead weaving, you have to be, you know, you gotta be careful that everything is knotted and all your knots are hidden. With wire, it's a little bit different. You don't have to worry nearly as much, okay? Look how pretty. I love it, I love it. Okay, and we've only got two beads left here. So we're down here to the end, and I'm just gonna wire wrap over the wraps that are already here. So we are gonna bulk that up just a little bit. That's okay, right? It matches because it's bulky on this end, so now it only makes sense that it's gonna be bulky on this end. I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool, and I'm gonna trim that off. And I'm gonna be careful about trimming that off. I wanna be sure that that wire is not sticking out. I did a pretty good job 
of getting it as flush as I could, but if you don't, definitely come in with your pliers and kind of push it down in there, you know, try to get it as close to the surface of those wraps as you can. That's really gonna help so that it doesn't get caught on your clothing. But now we need to deal with this guy that's here in the middle. And so what I wanna do is I wanna get close. If you need your magnifiers, you know, if you've got a lens on your, um, your light, this is a really good opportunity to use it. Because what I want is I wanna really get in there and I wanna try to cut this wire. I know it's kind of, it's out of focus here. Try to get it to focus up close. But where that first piece of wire ran out, where we cut it, I wanna try to cut this as close to that spot as possible so that then I can come in with my pliers and kind of pinch it down and it'll look as seamless as possible, okay? So you really gotta get close to it, as close as you possibly can, okay? And I can see that's gonna be right at it. It's sticking up just a little bit. I'm gonna come in with my pliers and gently, just gently, kind of squeeze that little guy right into place. And if you've cut right at the right length, he should fall right into line. And it's, it's pretty much seamless. Like I can see the cut in the wire there, but nobody else is ever gonna notice that right, because I got it as close as possible, and run your finger back and forth through there, so be sure, you know, that you don't have a piece of wire sticking up. That's also going to keep it as seamless as possible, okay? Nobody will ever know that you had to add wire to that, right? It looks like a, a single seamless piece. So, we have our nice little framed beads. And what I think is really cool about this design is it doesn't, there's no front or back, right? It looks exactly the same either direction, which is cool. So it can roll around on your wrist and it's gonna look awesome on either side. So now what we wanna do is we just wanna turn this into an actual bracelet. Let's give it a little measurement here to see. So I've got right at seven inches, which was perfect. It's gonna be a little bit big for me, but for other people, this is gonna be, um, you know, the standard size, in other words, is like seven and a half inches. So, you know, we're gonna end up with like a seven and three quarters to an eight inch bracelet once it's all said and done with our clasp. Um, but let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 eight millimeter beads is gonna give you right at seven inches without your clasp, okay? So just in case you're wanting to recreate it exactly as is. Now all we have to do is just take this stick of beads and turn it into an actual bangle bracelet. And you can't do this with just anything. That's why this inner core of wire is so cool, that 20 gauge, 22 gauge, whatever you're using, <clears throat> you can bend this around. And honestly, you don't even need a mandrel for it because even with the German style wire, it's nice and malleable, right? It's going to give that bangle shape just with very little effort. You don't have to hammer any of it. You don't have to do anything crazy to it. You naturally just kind of get this shape just by kind of bending it just a little bit, right? So we do need to add a clasp, but just so you can see what it's gonna look like on, how pretty is that, right? Use up your wire and use your favorite gemstones. And if you don't wanna use gemstones, don't, right? Use your acrylic beads, use your pearls. This will look so beautiful with pearls, right? And stack these up for a picture for your website, you know, wherever it is you're gonna be selling your bracelets. If you're gonna put this in a booth, stack it up with some other bracelets or stack it up with some more that are just like it in a bunch of different colors. All right, let's add a clasp to it and call it a day because that's all we need to do. And as far as your clasp is concerned, you can use whatever you want to. If you wanna put a really beautiful clasp on this, you can. Um, I'm just gonna stick with a lobster clasp and some jump rings, but um, you know, you could have all, when you were doing your wrapped loop, you could have wrapped in, right, your clasp so that it was attached without a jump ring. And depending on what kind of clasp you're using, you definitely could do it that way. Yes, pearls and gold wire would be gorgeous. Let me scroll back, because I think there was a question. Hold on, let's see here. Um, let's see, <laughs> Wanda got written up for something. <laughs> Um, I feel like there was a question. Okay, so Sharon says, could you make the other end a clasp rather than a second loop? Yeah, you absolutely can. And the only reason that I didn't do that <clears throat> 
is because I wanted to keep this as beginner friendly as possible. So the next step to answer Sharon's question is, is you would take your end of your wire and instead of just doing a loop and attaching a clasp, you would take what's left over and make your own clasp out of the wire. That's usually kind of like a step up. That's, you know, that's definitely, it's, I wouldn't even consider it intermediate, but I want you to get you know, in the swing of things with the wire first before you branch out into doing that. But yeah, you could do that. So you would have like one big loop on one end and then this guy you could turn into a hook and you wouldn't need any extra hardware, which is pretty awesome too, because that's going to save you, you know, that's going to save you from spending extra hardware on it. But we're just keeping it super simple. So we're going to attach ours with some jump rings and we will call it finished. So I'm just going to attach a jump ring and my clasp. A really beautiful clasp on this would look awesome, whether it's one that you make out of wire yourself or a pre, you know, a prefab clasp would look really awesome. Okay, and then my other jump ring. And actually, I probably should have flipped that clasp around, but for now, for now, it'll work. And there you go. So you've got a bangle bracelet, easy peasy. And I know I say easy peasy, but this is like once you get the wire wrap down or if you need to practice that wire wrap and get more proficient with it, this is a great one to practice with because you're going to figure out what it feels like to wrap wire up close to something, right? And that might be a jumping off point to wire wrapping a cabochon. You know, if you're working towards those goals, start with easier projects like this, and then you're gonna feel more comfortable and confident when you go to wrap something, you know, a stone that isn't drilled, right? You gotta get a feel for the wire first before you can, um, you know, bite off a big project like that. <laughs> but I think the results are gorgeous. Like nobody's going to look at this and be like, oh, that is so easy. Why? <laughs> Why did you do that? No, everybody's going to look at this and be like, gosh, that's so pretty. So, so pretty. And the color combinations, if you use artistic wire, you could use any color of the rainbow, right? Ooh, Kelly says a choker would be so cool. It would. That would be really beautiful. Maybe have some drops in between the wraps. Like you could take this to so many places, you guys. I just give you the basic design and then you guys run with it and you always take these, these ideas to the most amazing heights with your, with your level of expertise. You guys are all experts out there. I'm telling you. You guys, you guys come up with some amazing stuff. Like I'm inspired every day. All right, I'm gonna turn you guys around. I'll let you look at it from a different point of view. Um, let's see, do you need to add the extra jump ring? You really don't. You really don't have to add the extra jumper. It, you can totally do whatever you want to here in this, in this area. I was just trying to keep it easy peasy, but um, you definitely can alter this. However, and if you feel like you need an extra jump ring or you don't need a jump ring because you've got these big loops, you don't have to, right? All right, I'm going to turn you guys around. <sighs> First, it was the audio, and then it was a grumpy, and that's okay. That's okay. You know, it's okay. You never know what's going on in somebody else's life, and, you know, it is what it is. So, I hate that saying. Why did I say that? That is so not true. It is not what it is. <laughs> And there you go. So you can see how pretty, how pretty is that? I feel like Sharon, like turning it into its own class. I think she's definitely got like something there. I think that would look really, really pretty. So if you're ready for that next step, then definitely come in with your bell making pliers, your stepped bell making pliers and turn that into, um, you know, a little hook to hook through your loop. And you've got a whole little seamless piece. <laughs> It did turn out okay, didn't it? We're all still here together. Nobody cried. I might have wanted to. No. <laughs> I'm not going to let it get me down. I tell you what, you guys. I'm not going to let it get me down because, like I said, you never know what's going on in somebody else's life. And not only that, but you can be the sweetest. This is such a Southern saying. You can be the sweetest peach on the tree and somebody is just not going to like peaches. And that's okay. 
that's okay, right? Totally okay with me. Um, and for those of you who don't like the chit chat, that's okay. You can always come back later and watch on YouTube and you can fast forward, you can stop and start and you can do whatever you want to, to just get the project. I understand some of you are only here just for the education and um, feel like my blathering is, you know, a distraction. But the rest of us, we're building a family here. We really are. We're building a strong community. I know that, you know, we're helping each other through. We've, you know, we've been together through all of this um, pandemic stuff and we're continuing to be together. And when life goes back to normal, I feel like we're still going to have each other and still, you know, we're still going to be connected. We've made friendships here that are going to last a lifetime. So, um, you know, I don't let I don't let the little things like that get me down. It did throw me off for just a second, but I have you guys support and that means everything to me. And just know that I support you right back. You know, if you need me for anything, even if it's just to vent, um, if somebody, you know, said that your jewelry was ugly, you just let me know. Let me at them. <laughs> right. Oh, goodness. I love you back. I love you back. You guys so much. You just don't know. So I'm not going to let it get to me. I love the blathering. <laughs> I can talk to a rock. That's why I'm in this job. <laughs> Forget the jewelry, you know? All right. Yes, it is like we're sisters. Somebody said to me the other day, and then I'll, I will let you guys go. <clears throat> Somebody said to me the other day that they really loved watching my projects because it felt like we were in the room with each other and we were just spending time together, right? That's what I want to project. And that lets me know that I'm doing my job. So maybe that's not for everybody, but for those people who really want the connection and they want to feel like they are sitting with their friend, they're making jewelry together, they're laughing and having a good time. That's what I'm all about. That's what I'm all about. I am, I'm, you know, I'm hopefully educating you, but at the same time, I want you to know that, you know, I'm just a regular person just like you are. And I, I, I get as much out of this relationship as you guys get out of my, you know, out of me being here for you guys. So just know the love is reciprocated very, very much. Okay. I'm not going to change. I don't know how to be anything else but me. So you get what you get <laughs> and you don't pitch a fit. <laughs> All right, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your afternoon. I hope that you guys are inspired. I cannot wait to see if you guys make bracelets like this or you take this design technique and you turn it into something else at me, right? Use a little at symbol or the hashtag and put my name so that I get notifications to let me know so I can see your picture, share it all around, share the love. That's what it's all about, right? We're uplifting, we're lifting each other up, right? That's what, that's what we do. Have a wonderful afternoon. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is Feel Good Friday, which means you guys know easy, fun, beautiful jewelry and a whole lot of chit chat. So <laughs> I'll see you then. Have a great day, you guys. Bye.